All right, how are my Bud's Gunshot fans doing out there today? Today, as you probably noticed, we're talking about AR-15. So in this 10 minute interval, we are gonna cover everything you need to, well, we're gonna scratch the surface. Uh, so let's just jump right into this, right? AR-15s, they are very common rifles. You see them at almost every gun shop. They're sold all over the place, million different varieties, million different prices. But let's just kind of get started with the basics, right? So how does this gun work? All right, so we have right here Smith & Wesson Sport 2, and this guy is what we would call kind of our, our base model, what's going to really represent the most of like an M4 variant. Um, the biggest difference being is semi-auto versus full auto, right? So every time we pull this trigger, it's just going to go bang once. It's not going to continually fire as I hold that trigger down. So let's talk about how it actually functions and the way that actually functions is is when that bolt goes forward right it strips a cartridge from the magazine inserts it into the chamber the bolt carrier has the bolt key on the front of it which locks into the chamber the firing pin then is fired from the hammer hitting it when you pull the trigger and then what happens is is that the bullet actually exits the barrel the gas is escaping get fed into the gas block which then is fed back through the gas tube which is caught by the bolt carrier group's gas key which is on top of the bolt which then propels the bolt backwards as it strips another round from the magazine and puts it back into the chamber so that is what one complete cycle of this gun is and it's a gas operated gun for this model there are some that are what they call a piston system um, and basically what that means is is this is a rod actuating instead of the gas being cycled back into the upper receiver so that's kind of a down and dirty look on how this gun actually cycles when it fires and so some misnomers is this is actually has a limit to how fast it can actually cycle. It can only go so fast because of the mechanical options. But actually our trigger fingers aren't fast enough to shoot these guns at what they would be considered as full auto speeds, right? Because your finger just doesn't move fast enough. So what, what can this thing actually do? Well, AR-15s come in a larger variety and they come in actually a handful of different car uh, cartridges as well. So for, we're gonna be talking about just the 5.56 variation for right now. So for this guy, it's really only capable of shooting out to about 500 yards for a, a man-sized target, right? We're not able to shoot like a quarter at 500 yards. We're pretty much looking at like a man-sized target at 500 yards. So also on top of that, um, it is capable of having a, a magazine inserted, right? So we can have multiple size magazines with multiple different kind of capacities as well. Um, and also it has the ability to put on a large variety of accessories, either flashlights, forward grips, lasers, um, you have a huge variety of different kinds of scopes and optics, which is gonna be a very modular platform. So you can do everything from long distance shooting all the way down to something is what we call a close quarters combat or like home defense where you're only shooting from maybe like a few feet away. So. That is why AR-15s are so popular, because they're basically like Legos. You can modify these things like crazy. You can do all kinds of different kind of modifications as far as like with the sights and with the triggers and the buttstocks and the foregrips, and it just goes on and on and on. So let's talk about some of this misnomers real quick, right? The first one we kind of already touched on, which is full auto versus semi-auto. And so a full auto has actually another pin for your older styles. And there are some others that are newer that have some different variations, but most of them that are full auto are gonna have a third pin here. And that's what we call the interrupter. And what that basically does is, is that that interrupts your trigger pull to let the hammer fall again. So that when you hold that trigger pull down, it continues to fire as you hold it down. And as soon as you let go of it, that is when it stops firing. So that's full auto. Semi-auto, is for every trigger pull, the hammer falls forward, hits the firing pin, comes back and latches back on the disconnect, right? And so it holds it there until you release the trigger and pull the trigger again. So it's only gonna keep doing that while you are pulling and releasing. It can't continue to fire either by holding it down or by leaving your finger off the trigger. So another misnomer is, well, frankly, the bullets, right? So 5.56 five, bullet is, Kind of interesting. 5.56 five, is basically uh, NATO's round that they created after World War II because 
the the third or uh, the 30 on six was just too much damage right and so it was creating so much damage that it wasn't really a desirable round for war because you were just maiming everybody to death and it made the survival rate go down drastically also on top of that the um, 30 on six along with some of the other cartridges were during that time frame were so much bigger and so much heavier you just couldn't carry that much ammo and so what they did is they created the 556 NATO round, which is basically a varmint round, right? And so it's designed to wound or to maim to get you out of the fight, but not necessarily kill you, right? You can still kill somebody with a 556 round. It is very, very easy, but that was kind of that logic. They wanted a bullet that was lighter. They could carry more of them. They could create less damage. And so therefore more people lived in war than died. So that's kind of like the, the concept of the bullet. The 5.56 round is really just a varmint round, right? Now, as far as the range of the bullet, you know, 500 yards is a pretty good distance, but as far as like hunting rounds go, hunting rounds pretty much across the board have better accuracy and better range than the 5.56 bullet. And that's pretty universally known and accepted. So most of the time, these guns, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna do well for what they're designed to do, but a lot of people kind of associate this really large, grand kind of aspect that they're just a, a weapon of mass destruction. They're capable of so much more than what they really are, and they're really not. So let's go over some proper usages, right? So some proper usages is, you'll see a lot of people will kind of stand backwards and hold it and, and, and basically hold the firearm like they're kind of cradling it. And the problem there is, is that when this gun cycles, it's gonna deflect off your shoulder, kind of go up in the air, and you're not really gonna maintain it. So you're actually supposed to bury it lower on your shoulder, roll your body forward, and kind of dig into the platform. And so now when this gun goes off, it goes straight into my shoulder, and it's gonna go down my back and into my legs. So I'm absorbing all this recoil every time, and it's not gonna go anywhere, and I'm gonna maintain control of that weapon. Also on top of that, you'll see a lot of people when they go to trigger pull, they'll just kind of slap it and it'll cause the gun to jerk. So you're gonna lose your accuracy there. Also on top of that, uh, when it comes to actually clearing the weapon, you wanna eject that magazine first, discharge it, rack it a couple of times, make sure that it's empty. At that point, you're gonna be discharged. So let's get to what you really wanna talk about. We've got some styles, like good lore. We have their Smith & Wesson Sport 2 the Springfield Saint, we have the LWRC, and we have the Daniel Defense, right? So we got lower end, higher end, wide variety. And so why is there so many styles, right? Some people say it's for comfort, some people say it's for functionality. But honestly, there is a billion different variations, right? And so you can do just about anything you want to these, as far as getting like fluted barrels, which are gonna improve on accuracy, decrease heat, and give you the ability to shoot the gun longer. Um, kind of what we talked about earlier when we were talking about the, the piston system, having that ability not cycle any of that gas back into the upper receiver. That's actually a, a newer modification, relatively new compared to the lifespan of the AR-15, um, that has really kind of given us some cleaner shooting, cooler shooting, faster shooting abilities. Uh, so this higher end AR-15 range, basically what we're doing is we're capitalizing on precision of make, right? The parts are going to fit together tighter. The parts are going to be made out of higher quality metals. The parts are going to have special coatings to make them easier to clean, to make them easier to function, and to do all those kind of things. Also, our barrels are mostly going to be chrome lined. They're mostly going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, higher temp rating, stuff like that. So they're going to be able to run hotter, run longer, and they're going to be able to shoot smoother and cleaner. Also, the biggest difference you're going to kind of see in this region is that this is what we call our delta ring setup. And what this is designed to do is, is you have hand guards that are actually clamped between two pieces of metal to give you something to hold onto, right? Where these newer versions have what we call a free floating barrel. And what that does is that free floating barrel actually gives you the ability so your barrel doesn't touch at any point so that the harmonics of your barrel are cleaner and smoother and it's gonna give a lot more accuracy, so that's great. Now, I got one more to show you and that's just, this is these are pretty standard, right? You can buy these just about anywhere, but this little guy right here, it's probably one of my favorites. This is actually a 300 Blackout SBR with a 30 cal titanium can we got a Vortex uh, Spark AR on top of it. 
and we have an enforced APL flashlight. We also have a POF trigger. So this gun has been severely modified. Matter of fact, it was actually built from the ground up like this. Nothing was taken off to put something new on. You actually have the capability of building these guns by yourself because they're, like I said earlier, they're like Legos. You can kind of just throw them together, assemble them, and they will be able to make any kind of variation you want. Um, so definitely kind of think about doing that if you really have a lot of specific things you're looking for in these rifles. Now, there's obviously a lot more to talk about, and we're gonna have some more of these seminars coming out, definitely covering the AR-15s. We're gonna to try to cover a lot of different topics. And if you have any questions, or if you have anything you specifically want us to talk about, let us know, and we'll try to put that into our next uh, lesson. But for right now, my name is Jonathan Berger. Thanks for tuning in at Bud's Gun Shop. Um, if you have any more questions that you need right now, you can come down and visit us over here in Lexington, Kentucky, or one of our other stores, and we'll definitely help you out.